Governor Kathy Hochul proudly announcing gun violence in the state has declined to the lowest level since the state started tracking the data back in 2006. And that includes Syracuse. So joining us now, Police Chief Joe Cecil. Chief, always good to see you. Thanks for being back with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so sounds like there that uh, the numbers seem to and the numbers seem to show that we're doing well on gun violence. How are we actually doing out on the street? Yeah, so numbers tell one story, but the street's the real story. Yeah, well, so we're down in every category, and those numbers are real. The biggest one being 37% down in uh, individuals shot and either killed or injured. So as I always say, you know, we don't take that as a number. We know it's fewer people, fewer families standing around, either a hospital bed or a coffin. So it's a big number for us. What do you attribute the decline yeah. to? It's just great police work and detective work. You know, we are blessed right now in the police department with having a lot of young, energetic, proactive officers on the street and seasoned officers as detectives inside. So not only are we getting more guns off the street, but the detectives are uh, taking down more drug houses where we get guns mm. and there's gun violence. And our detectives, homicide squad, uh, is, is uh, reaching right into the high 90s right now and we'll probably get another 100% closure when the rest of the country hovers around 54%. But all those things come into, a, into play when you're talking about reducing gun violence. Mm -hmm. Younger officers being proactive, seasoned officers following up and investigating and closing out cases. 100% closure, that is quite impressive. Yeah, yeah that's pretty Let's good. talk about the investigation up on the hill. An SU fraternity suspended for what the chancellor has called repugnant conduct in a video that circulated on social media. The Department of Public Safety at SU investigating, Syracuse Police also brought in. What role will SPD play? So, uh, as you know, we have a very good re relationship with S S uh, SUDPS. Um, Steve Ch Chief Stone has some great a great crew up there, and I can say that because many of the people working up there are ex SPD officers. Mm. Um, <laughs> so they they notified us early on, but they're more than capable and competent of taking this investigation on. So our role is pretty minimal. Uh, they just let us know about it. They said we'd get back to you if it gets to a certain level where we think we need your help. But right now they're, they're the lead on that investigation, um, and uh, it seems to be going well. Can can hazing rise to a criminal charge? 100 percent again. What an assault? What what well, what do you look at? Sure, it would be it would well it would be there's both a misdemeanor and a felony um, mm. hazing, so it could rise rise to even a felony level, uh, depending on what they do to the individual. And chief, is that more where you come in on the investigation? I mean, DPS can't really file criminal right. charges, right? Is that where they kind of work with you on what we can and should be doing here? Typically, they'll contact us. Well, they contact us to let us know about things. Sure. But yeah, certainly if it reaches to the felony level, they're going to let us know. They can make misdemeanor arrests, but oh. they would probably let it. They would, if it leads toward criminal charges, they will probably allow us to make the arrest. Uh, but right now they have the weed. Okay. Um, and I know they've been interviewing witnesses and things like that. Um, Chief, this week Common Council um, ended up pulling a vote technically. They didn't reject it. They pulled a vote on an $825,000 settlement uh, from that deadly police shooting, the Father's Day riot, uh, almost uh, 10 years ago. I think it was 2016. At the time, Officer Francimone was, was hailed as a hero by the DA and others. Um, she was alone in that mob. It could still get approved. Either way, how do you feel about the city actually uh, willing to settle in this case? Yes, it's a great question, Jeff. Listen, um, I've been on, as you know, four decades. Uh, if I stayed on four more decades, which I'm not, <laughs> um, I would still say it was one of the most heroic, brave, life-saving events that I've ever witnessed on camera. Um, she, you have 200 plus people running away from gunfire. You have one sole officer who was fairly fresh out of the academy running toward the gunfire. No less than four guns were being fired around her and she went in there to save lives and she saved lives. The settlement hasn't has less to do with her bravery, how heroic she was, whether she was right or wrong. It has more to do with the amount of time that's gone by, as you mentioned. Eight years, nine years. Some of the testimony has been recanted. Some folks are unwilling to testify now. Um, so things have changed dynamically in the case itself. And so think about this. Uh, the well-being of the officer herself having to testify and relive this entire event again mm -hmm. with the chance that you may lose at the end and have a jury say you did everything wrong um, and, uh, um, and have a settlement against you. That's what they took into account. Uh. Not right or wrong, not bravery, not heroic. We, we concede that and I'll say it until um, I walk out the door how brave it was. It's, it's whether or not they can win the case. Hmm. Oh, so okay. that puts a different, mm -hmm. in a yeah. different context. Yeah. So you wouldn't be opposed if the council decided to settle. 
based I, on what you just shared with us. I agree with the settlement, if oh. that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I agree that, yeah, I agree that we need to settle on this one because of those facts. Mm -hmm. if, we do, if we're going to put her through this whole event, uh, not, not to mention other officers, with the potential, and it seems to be a high potential that we could lose at the end, then a settlement um, is, is a better uh, outcome. Okay. It doesn't say she did anything wrong. She doesn't have to testify and relive it. Uh, I know it's a substantial amount of money. Right. The reason people are struggling with it is because it was so heroic. Yeah. It was so brave. You're right. And they're saying, how can we possibly settle on this right. one? It's because of the length of time uh -huh. and, the, and the evidence that has, mm -hmm. has evaporated. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's move on to another yeah. topic. We understand Syracuse Police have a new partnership with Helio Health, and that's to help with mental health calls and also calls with drug addiction. Tell us more about this partnership, how it will work, and how your officers will be working with Helio Health. Yeah, so it's a great program. It's so new now, but uh, we still, we already have some successes. They're working right out of the public safety building, by the way. Oh. Um, so they have this connection oh, wow. with officers. And I just had a, saw a Facebook post yesterday uh, from uh, someone up in Eastwood who was having coffee. Uh, some gentleman came in going through some type of crisis, disrupting everything. Helio Health went by themselves, not with us, mm. on their own. We're able to calm him down, escort him out. And here's the important part of it. This partnership is after they escort him out, they do an assessment, they do an evaluation and find out what it is he needs, whether it's uh, doctors, medicine, services, mm -hmm. so they can hook him up with those services and put him back on the, the correct path. So that's why it's so valuable. They're the experts in, uh, as you mentioned, drug addiction and mental health. And in some cases, they're going alone. In some cases, we're going with them. But we're already seeing great promise with this program. And I think, hasn't that been the piece that's always been missing? Even in cases of overdose calls, when officers go out, perhaps they use Narcan and revive them. That person who was struggling with that addiction needs help. So now you have that piece that's been missing, right? Yeah, Christy, that's the critical piece. I mean, we're, we're, we're saving them. They're jumping in an ambulance, getting further treatment and then walking away. Or sometimes we're saving them and they're walking away. Right, Boy, we have seen with, that. With no help whatsoever, mm -hmm. no, no further help down the road of what they really, really need to get back on a path where they're not gonna be laying out on a sidewalk um, with an overdose again. Chief, I wanna to try to get to this one. We got about a minute and a half left. Uh, it seems like we're hearing less about auto thefts, but again, going back to numbers and data, that's telling a completely different story. Uh, why are these uh, car thefts uh, still so high? Well, the product's still there. People are still doing them. Young people still seem to think it's a challenge uh, to go out and take these cars. We're 21% above last year, but keep in mind, we were, in January and February, we were 80% above last year. So we certainly haven't succeeded mm -hmm. because we're 95% higher than uh, the five-year average. So it's still happening, still occurring, um, because it can be done, and, and there's still young people out there that are willing to do it. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get a handle on it sooner or later. Um, but it, the product's still out there, meaning the certain product, certain vehicles. Yeah. But beyond that, you, as you know, uh, we started to have juveniles break into occupied homes mm -hmm. and steal the keys as well. So is that still happening? We Where haven't seen we too haven't many seen of those in the last couple of weeks. Right. Um, so, so in the last couple of weeks, it's mostly been the Hyundai, Kia thefts, and people still need to get those free wheel locks, right? You have them at the at the PSB. We do. You, yeah. We do. And keep in mind, the next component that will come into play is cold weather with people uh, leaving their cars running. True. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. don't do it. Chief Cecil, always uh, great to catch yes. up with you on a variety of topics. We really appreciate it very much. Thanks for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief.